Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so just as I said in my video yesterday, Kamala Harris's job right now is to get people to the polls. You know, at this point, it's too late to salvage things. There's two weeks left to election day, and so it's really about turnout right now. Her previous job, of course, over the last couple of months was to get some strong, good moments in the media. She scheduled a bunch of interviews and failed spectacularly, I'd argue, so that didn't work. But now that ship has sailed, people have essentially made their mind, at least most people and the idea is you need to motivate people to show up and vote for you. That's the goal here. There's a shift in priority, but it seems as though, unfortunately for Kamala Harris, let's just say she's not exactly doing that great of a job. You know, usually as a political candidate, your job is to target specific demographics and bring them in, but all Kamala Harris is doing here ahead of election seems to be alienating key demographics that she needs to win this election. Of course, yesterday we were talking about the Catholic vote that she was alienating, and today we gotta talk about the progressive left. Folks, the far leftoids just aren't having it with this embrace of Liz Cheney and the neocon right in general. You know, I could sit here and say a lot of words, but as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Just look at the body language here of the TYT's Cenk Uger and Anna Kasparian. It pretty much tells you all that you need to know. Let's have a conversation about it. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So here's the video from the Young Turks. Quote, Harris triples down on, in all capitals, awful strategy. Take a look at this. Our only hope is that Trump uh, just gives up. Like, and I don't mean like literally. Of course, he's not going to do that. But he's kind of de facto doing it, where he just melts, right? And he just is so unelectable that that she wins because this is hopeless. What is this? We're going back to the 1990s. I love Republicans. I love bipartisanship. Republicans have such good ideas. Might that encourage people to vote for them instead of you? And what Republicans are you talking about? See, they don't understand modern day politics at all. They're still, oh, um, we're gonna get the John McCain Republicans, the Dick Cheney, Mitch McConnell Republicans. No, those are corporate Republicans. Exactly, perfect. And those corporate, those voters don't exist. So you think that because your donors are all corporate Republicans and corporate Democrats, that there's this giant, subsection of the country that are like, oh my God, if she would just work with corporate Republicans to help big business, we'd vote for her. No, the undecideds are barely follow politics. They're not John McCain fans or Dick Cheney fans. They want you to help them. You need to be a populist to do that. So running towards these corporate Republicans is a disastrous strategy. Donald Trump has increased his support among black voters. I just, why do you think that is? Anyway, I, look, I, no, I am gonna go back to it. Even if, let's say, best case scenario for Kamala Harris, cozying up with neocons like Dick Cheney works out for her and gets her across the finish line. I need Democratic voters to please just explain to me why is it that you guys really want the Democrat to win? If the Democrat is willing to open her administration up to neocons who do not possess the same values as us, right? If the Democratic Party becomes the new party of neocons, why do we care so much about getting the Democrat elected? No, it's, they have one. I just need to understand. I need to understand because, guys, okay, I don't care about the party's label, I care about what the party is going to do to make our lives better. And if the signaling right now is, we're gonna be like the Bush era Republicans, what is the point? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And honestly, I really agree with the TYT here. It does seem or it feels like an awful strategy. We'll have to see on election day, maybe the Democrats know something that I don't. But what it feels like is Kamala Harris is undergoing so many transformations and shifts. She doesn't know who she is. And it's getting harder and harder for people to relate. It's getting harder and harder for people to say, yeah, that's the person that represents my values. What does Kamala Harris represent? You know, at one point she refuses to condemn anything that Joe Biden did. She stated that she had no regrets and would do nothing different than what's been done over the last disastrous four years. But now she's saying, no, I'm totally different from Joe Biden. Clearly, I am not Joe Biden, and I am certainly not Donald Trump. And what I do offer is a new generation of leadership for our country. At one point, she's pro-open borders. No human is illegal. But now she's tough on the border, a real border hawk. 
She wanted to defund the police, known her entire career as a far-left lunatic district attorney and prosecutor. But now she presents herself as a tough cop. She was a far-leftist. But now, all of a sudden, she's a Republican? Or I guess we could call it Republican light? It's just so cringe and weird. But most importantly, it feels like bad strategy. It's like I keep saying, they want to have their cake and eat it too. But I don't think that's the way the world works. I think if you wear multiple masks at once, you run a pretty high risk of alienating people. And that seems to be exactly what's going on. You know, Kamala Harris needs to win the youth vote. But most importantly, she needs to motivate them to head to the polls. Young voters, of course, are very vocal, but they're also low propensity voters. They don't always show up. And we also know that young female voters in particular are extremely far left these days. And so what do you think that specific demographic is going to make of this whole Liz Cheney thing? Yeah, not exactly a good look now, is it? I don't really know what the strategy here is other than hashtag girl power or something along those lines. I just don't get who this is meant to convince. And I mean, speaking of convincing, Kamala Harris just wrapped up another event with Liz Cheney. I mean, she's really diving deep into this thing. And it's just honestly an utter disaster. You know, again, the same question. I'm sitting here asking myself, who is this convincing? Let me, if I can just speak to the, what people are feeling. You, the, we cannot despair. We cannot despair. You know, the nature of a democracy is such that I think there's a duality. On the one hand, there's an incredible strength when our democracy is intact. An incredible strength in what it does to protect the freedoms and rights of its people. Oh, there's great strength in that. And it is very fragile. It is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. And so that's the moment we're in. And I say do not despair because in a democracy, as long as we can keep it in our democracy, the people, every individual has the power to make a decision about what this will be. And, that's, and so let's not feel powerless. It's word salad nonsense, just a bunch of empty platitudes. Vote for me, the totally inarticulate, incompetent political chameleon. That's the only thing I'm getting. Vote for me, I'm real good friends with the Cheneys. What is the purpose? I mean, call me a nutcase, but it seems like the only person on the left who's got their head screwed on straight these days is Cenk Uger. He tweeted this recently, There's no force on earth that can get me to vote for Trump, but name a Cheney as your Secretary of Defense and I'll find another option. To all Democratic morons in D.C., the entire country hates Dick Cheney. His favorability in the last poll was 13%. Please stop trying to lose. I share a similar perspective, but if you turn on the mainstream media, Liz Cheney is a hero. She is a character almost out of the movies, out of uh, A Man for All Seasons. I've never seen a more heroic figure than Liz Cheney. Uh, she lost her her state probably forever. She lost her party. She lost her leadership in the Republican House. She could have been on, going, been on her way to speaker. It was very probable. She gave it all away in the interest of truth. That's what she stood for. It's amazing to me how few people have gotten behind her. But now one person that's got behind her is Kamala Harris. And those sitting together, those two women, as you say, on that stage is remarkable because there's such courage there from Liz Cheney. And I, I, have, I cannot say anything that, I, that would stop me from saying she's been unbelievable. You would never imagine Liz Cheney, a person who is from a Republican dynasty, a person who's not just from you know, a family like the Bushes, conservative, but crossover folks, the Cheneys, she is here standing arm in arm with Kamala Harris. That is really, really surprising. It's really brave. It's really impressive. And it's really important. It's just unbelievable. And it's obvious what Kamala Harris is trying to do. She's doing exactly what she's done her entire career, whatever it takes to get herself in that position of power. If that means essentially renouncing her entire political identity that she's crafted over multiple decades and now becoming a Cheney Republican, then she'll do it. Anything to become president. You know, again, it's just so absurd. And I don't see how this motivates the key voting demographics that Kamala Harris needs. You know, it feels like she's fighting to get the Cheney Republican vote. What is that? Like five people at the detriment in a straight up betrayal 
of the core demographics that would actually vote for her. Make it make sense, I don't know, maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. Maybe there's some genius political calculus, some information that the Democrats have that we don't have. All I know is that if Donald Trump wins and Kamala Harris loses this election, I think as we look back on it, if all our analysis was correct, Kamala Harris will have run the worst mainstream campaign in modern American history. From the worst vice president to the worst presidential candidate, wow, what a stellar track record. I guess CNN was right. She really is the most qualified person to ever run for office. Holy friggin' moly. But of course, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. We'll have to see exactly what happens. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.